What's up guys welcome back to Tech Booker and today we are going to talk about the Apple event. So it was held on the 8th of March and some very interesting products came out. So let's talk about firstly the iPhone 13 colors. So Apple has launched two new colors for the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro. It's bold green for the iPhone 13 and it is alpine green for the iPhone 13 Pro. I mean they're all right. Um, but some things which you're going to talk about later in this video are more crazy than you ever. So, the second thing which Apple launched in this event was the new iPhone SE. Now, if you have not watched the Apple event and you look at some pictures of the iPhone SE, it looks like it, Apple has just scammed this. Like they've added $30 to the price and there's absolutely, and I can guarantee you that, no design difference. But we have the A15 Bionic chip, 5G, more durable glass, Smart HDR4 and some other features. But if you can buy any of the iPhone 13 series, I think you should go for some of them or go the Android route. Because Apple wants you to buy the iPhone 13s. That's not my greatest detective work ever. But if you do not have the $700 to $1100 for the iPhone 13 to 13 Pro Max, they want you to go for the iPhone SE. So I think that's why the iPhone SE is there. So that you can buy this. So now let's talk about the next thing. And that is the new iPad Air. So now, if you look at the iPad lineup, it might seem a bit confusing, to be honest, it is. But the iPad Air is like basically Apple's premium uh, product, the premium iPad, which is thin. But it has some major upgrades this time around. Firstly, it has the M1 chip. This is not groundbreaking. The iPad Pro already has it, and the M1 is like one and a half years old. But I think Apple has managed to do a very good upgrade without making it feel something experimental. Firstly, now the iPad Air is pretty much as fast as the iPad Pro, and that is a really nice thing. Also, the iPad Air is much more affordable than the iPad Pro. It starts in only $599 for the for the 64GB version, and it goes up to $749 for the 256GB version. Now, Apple still does not offer you the 128GB version because they just want you to buy the 256GB version. So, that's a bit of an issue. But there is something more that Apple brings, and this is solely for pros. Firstly, we are going to talk about the M1 Ultra. Now, we have seen the M1, we have seen the M1 Pro, we have seen the M1 Max. All of them are incredible chips. But this time, we have a chip that can take on the best of the best. The PC Kings, AMD and Intel. Now, the M1 Max and the M1 Pro were made for laptops. This is made for a, P for a PC competition device. And, you, and whenever you think about a computer for the Macintosh lineup, you think about the Mac Mini, or the Mac Pro and those and while the Mac Mini is all right the Mac Pro is extremely expensive the Mac Studio however which is powered by the M1 Ultra I when I heard the specs when I saw the specs of the M1 Ultra I came this close to absolutely spitting out my water drink <laughs> because it has literally double the things that M1 Max offered and it can take square onto the in, in the Intel uh, uh, Alder Lake chips and now we are going to talk about what is powered by the M1 Ultra M1 Ultra powers the Mac Studio. Now, Mac Studio does not only come with M1 Ultra for the lower end model, we have the M1 Max chip. But the M1 Ultra provides way more. Firstly, the Mac Studio is like five times less expensive than the Mac Pro and is better in almost every regard. Now, when you first look at a Mac Studio, you might think it is a Mac Mini which has been just let into an all you can eat buffet because it is thick. And I say that with five C's, but it does deliver. It has a, a multi-fan system which can keep the things well cool. And we also have something. What will I plug this seemingly unbelievable Mac Studio into? Well, you don't have to cough <laughs> up the five thousand dollars for the Pro Display XDR, or just have to go cheap with some kind of two hundred dollar monitor. You have options. If you can spend up to sixteen hundred dollars, you have the Studio Display. Now, the Studio Display is not better than the Pro Display XDR. Not at all. It is less bright. It has uh, less pixels, but it has a built-in webcam, which the Pro Display XDR doesn't, and it is a lot cheaper. So, when someone asks me what should I do, a Pro Display XDR or Studio Display, I can tell him, if you can compromise with some things, go for the Studio Display. If you enjoyed this video, then do it. Liking and subscribing to the channel, because new and better uploads are going to come out very soon. Thank you very much.